What's up, Yup Gang? It's your boy Taxon, and welcome back to FDBSG Things. And today we're bringing you another very exciting deck profile, guys. This is going to be the deck that I piloted through my last local. This is Dark Broly. But before we get into it, guys, I do want to say if you want any custom sleeves and or mats, absolutely check out Pro Mats, guys. Best place to go get your custom card needs. Link will be in the description below for you guys to go check them out. And also, as you can see on the screen now, they are holding a monthly tournament via Discord at the second weekend of every single month with some great prizing here. You can win some Pro Mat mats, TCG Metal Leaders, and also some booster boxes. So make sure that if this is something you're interested in, Use the links in the description below to go to this Discord and join it. With that being said, guys, if you guys enjoyed this deck profile or my content in general, make sure you guys smash all those buttons for me, like, comment, and subscribe. And with that being said, guys, let's spin this around and show you the deck. Alrighty, guys, now here's the deck. Now let's go over it. Now, first things first, as we do in all videos, we go over the leader. Uh, what he does is once per or activate main, once per turn, add up to one card from your life to your hand. Look at the top five cards of your deck, place up to 330Ks into your drop area from them bottom deck the rest and then whenever he attacks he draws when you're at four or less you draw two and awaken on the back side you have that nifty put 330k's back into your drop area from your warp and then draw a card and then your of course your activate battle which is now in a red end to a once per turn uh combo of 30k zero plus zero so that'll give you 5k combo for some of those dead cards in your hand Starting off the list, now I do want to say before I dive into this, this is the first time I've gotten back into Dark Broly since he was hit. So this deck isn't going to be like as optimal as possible. This was the first week I actually started testing with it again. But this is what I was running. For Broly, uh, great turn one, especially if you see the ball. Put this guy on field, and then eventually you ball under him and go into uh, the uh, six drops from your deck. The reason I like this card a lot is because it helps thin out your deck. And it also allows you to turn one a six drop, which actually helps with your aggression a lot. Uh, next up, I have two of these Toas. I still like this card a lot because if I don't open my ball, I can still play this turn one, go grab a ball, drop this turn two, and ball into it from there. And obviously, since we're talking about the ball, we run four of the ball. So we got a decent little package right here to start off our game plan. Four Broly, four ball, two Toa. Toa is completely optional. I've been thinking about cutting this card, actually. I think this would be a uh, better slot as a true Fighting Spear Goku. Next up, we got our uh, six drops. We got three of the Revive Ranger. Also, 30k to hit with our leader. All of these are so far. Uh, two of the SR Warp card from Field. This is the Uncontrolled Berserker. That guy's really good. One of the Blocker. Uh... He can come up and actually be really clutch in certain situations because you can block one uh, one attack with him and then combo him off to survive another one. So he, he's relatively okay. Don't come up too much, but if you have these two in field already and you've already played them for the once per turn that you can play them, you can just play him for your uh, another 30k attacker. Uh, I played one copy of this card, uh, the Vindicator Dark Broly. This guy is kind of booty. He's an overwhelm for one auto uh, for one whenever your opponent has three or more energy at the end of a battle when this card uh when this card attacked you can play uh you can't play copies of this card for the turn and then you can choose one of these following effects you can place up to six 30ks from your warp to your drop area or you can choose a seven drop from your hand or warp and play it on top of it um i thought this would be a cool target to ball into and then attack and then possibly play this guy uh seven drop uh, unfortunately this card never came up. It never felt like the the go-to ball target. Like, most of the time, this is my favorite card. Like, so, I'm just gonna play this card, swing with it, combo it off, and then try to play, uh, play it again the next turn. So, I just keep looping that card. This card is just not necessary. I'd probably just make this another copy of the blocker card, to be quite honest. Um, and since we're, that's about it for the Dark Broly stuff. We'll move into what we call the thwarting chain which goes in about every black saiyan nowadays three ss4 vegetas this guy warps card from your opponent's hand and then he's a 30k beater and then three of the overall six goku beyond all limits this guy is going to go grab you uh a seven cost but uh between three and seven from your warp to your hand pretty nice allows you to pick up your thwartings and other things you need <laughs> Also, both of these guys are 30k, so when you hit them with your leader's uh, front side effect, you can easily put them in the drop area and then move them off of these cards' effects uh, in order to put them in your warp, or you can just over them. Um, three copies of 
thwarting. Uh, obviously, we got thwarting for playing the thwarting package. Cards absolutely phenomenal. Once you guys, once you get these guys set up, you just tap one, go into this guy. He's going to be a, a main, mainly used for board clear and also just being a card that actually sticks since you're not overwhelming him. So a card's pretty clutch. I run one copy of this card. Really, the only reason I ran this card was so that in case I did run into like a barrier card that I really needed to get rid of. This deck does have decent removal in, in terms of uh, just getting rid of cards off the field. Uh, so with uh, this six, with the yeah, with the six stock Broly and then the Thwarting, pretty decent removal. But when you have a barrier one, you don't really have an option to get rid of it. So I decided to tag one of these guys in here just so that when it comes up, I can, if I have them in hand, I can go ahead and deal with it. Last card for the Thwarting Chain, I run one copy of SS4 Gogeta. Basically, if if you see turn four and you already have quite a few of these guys established and you've already been working on your opponent's hand with uh, other cards. This card is going to do a lot of work if you're versing a matchup where he can come into play. Uh, so basically, if you're not versing blue or yellow, this card is going to do pretty good. And just getting rid of two of your cards, uh, opponent's cards, ignoring barrier, two cards from their hand, and then throwing in three times 35k. And then, like I said, if you have any of these guys already boarded, that's just so many 30 and over attacks that your opponent's just going to have to have like a flood negate, or else they're going to lose everything. Uh, with that being said, we're moving on to a couple of our overwhelmers. We got two Demagra. I run two copies of this card because this is a fantastic turn two. Great way to get some things into the warp. Um, and plus he's great board removal. He replaces himself and then every single turn that he attacks and he sticks on field, he just generates you more value getting rid of your opponent's hand. So like I said earlier, I kind of like to just keep finagling at my opponent's hand until uh, these 30Ks are just too much for them to deal with. I run two copies of this card. Um, this card's kind of eh. I got a lot of use out of it out in the, uh, during the weekend, but to me it felt like it was a card that was more techy and situational than uh, necessary. I felt like I could have had that uh, a better slot for that, but this could easily get replaced with the negate that rips a life and plays a blocker. Let me just say it like that. Uh, he is cool when I want to play an extra, extra attacker, but I almost never used him for that. I always used him for defense this weekend. Uh, two of the brainwash no more this card is absolutely amazing you can either overwhelm them and then reload your drop area by three or you can use of course his really clutch activate battle for one energy you can discard him from your hand and crit one life and then you don't take no damage for the battle the card's really good next up we got two mechchikabora broken seal uh this card's really good basically you're gonna if you don't see what you need to see turn uh turn one and two like let's say you just don't have a ball you can turn one this it doesn't get KO'd by your opponent's skill so more than likely he'll just sit there and active play this turn two call out one of your opponent's cards they can't play it during their next turn and then also you get to go grab a ball once per turn off his effect from your deck and then once you do that you can go into his him with the ball and then go play a, uh, a six drop so pretty clutch now moving into some of our defensive options here we got two Supreme Kai uh, the Labyrinth Unleashed the card's really good. Basically, once there's uh, three cards in, in anyone's warp, this card becomes a one drop, negate the attack, and then it comes into play. And then if it comes into play, the auto will say, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards, and then it goes to the warp for the turn. At the end of the turn, it will come back into play with its skills negated. So, pretty clutch card. It saves you from two attacks from one energy. Next up, we got three Power Burst. Of course, we have to play this card, especially being that we have decent one drops that we can go back and grab. We'll uh, definitely play that. Uh, and it's a sparking so uh, we run one petrification uh, I really like this card I love having the option in the deck to stop pending autos anything that's going to be too much and or just stopping an additional attack like I can negate a leader swing with this and then target one of their battle cards and then just stop it completely uh, next up we run two super kamehameha uh, running two of this card just to really just stop uh, flood negates we don't want to have to deal with topo or any of those poutine whatever Hands, you know, anything like that. Uh, super combos, we got Vegeta. This is why I was saying this would probably be better off as a uh, true fighting Goku, even just as a two of. The reason so is because obviously he's a great super combo, but in this deck, if you're playing Thwarting, you could have the option to fuse with him, but uh, unfortunately, when I was building the deck before I took it, uh, I didn't even think about adding a 5k fusion target, I just was using these guys. So, card's great. 
add something that will pair with it so you can use it as fusion fodder after you combo with it. Uh, next up we got two Hidden Power East Supreme Kai. You guys know what this does. Combo with it 10k and then you choose the attacking card and then it gains double strike. Really strong. We run one Fighting Face. This will help us close out games or just help us uh, add that additional pressure that we uh, need. We run one Mira Crater to absorb this card is absolutely phenomenal. I've, I love this card and I don't think I ever would trim it from this deck. This card is a 30k so it can get hit off your uh, off your leader's front side if you really need to. It's also a 7 or less, or a, a between 3 and 7 so Goku can go grab it if you need to. And also it's a really cheap overarm. It comes out, for, it's an overarm 4 for 1. And then also this card gets 5k for every card in your warp. So by late game this card is going to be an absolute beast and basically be unstoppable unless your opponent has a negate. And him paired with Choppa, it's basically uh, GG's unless your opponent has something that's going to skill negate him mid-battle. Uh, card's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I want to I wanna change it. I like that card a lot. Uh, next up, we run Plea. Uh, I feel like Plea is necessary in the deck. If you see it, it's fantastic. If you don't, cool. Bottom deck it with your super combo. Or, I, I mean, yeah, just bottom deck it with your super combo. Or you can just, co or you can just like tap one and combo it off if you honestly need to but you're probably just going to bottom deck it with a super combo this card is phenomenal turn one you see this dude if you see your ball and you have this in hand you're more than likely going to turn three explode because this guy has offering he's going to help you draw two and your leader awakening effect is draw two as well so you will draw four on that turn if they don't crit a life and then also you're going to swing 30k triple strike on top of whatever you have already developed so card absolutely snapped and like I said you, this, you can only run one of it so if you draw into it too late and it's uh, dead in your hand your super combo will get rid of it and get you two new cards. Uh, next up I run I ran Heroin's Lineage this weekend. Uh, card was okay. Uh, <laughs> I really wish I had Kai this weekend just because Kai is a lot better. Uh, Heroin's Lineage would have been clutch if if I had battle cards in, in matchups that were worth taking. Um, most of the time when Heroin Slendage came up, the cards were in rest mode, and I was going to use it on my turn just to steal a card and swing more. And it never came up beneficial. So I just, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I charged this one game just because I knew it wasn't going to be effective. So yeah, my secret rare choice, probably not the best for this deck. Uh, Kai, in my opinion, probably the better option and or pan pan is absolutely really really good we also do have that brand new uh brainwashed uh supreme kai which also would be a pretty decent option uh being that it does flood and negate a whole turn on your opponent's turn and then also it's a 50k double strike so that's a pretty big number but yeah guys this is uh my dark broly list that i played last week i know a couple of you guys in the comments wanted to see the deck profile so i uh, wanted to make sure i got this out for you and like i did say earlier this is like my very first iteration of the deck since the errata back like three four sets ago so i will be tinkering with it more and more and like i've already been pointing out things that i didn't like during the day like this card unnecessary in the deck don't play it this card's a maybe in the deck you don't need to play it this card's unnecessary you don't need to play it um like so there's a f there's a few things that you need to uh consider also hammond's lineage uh great card and all i don't think it's the gr uh, right scr choice for this deck so with that being said guys Make sure you guys leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this deck. Absolutely, I love Dark Broly. Um, Dark Broly is actually the deck that I was playing when I first dove into this game competitively. I went to my very first regional in Indiana, and it was like an 80-player event, and I actually top, I got top 8 in that my uh, very first event. So yeah, this deck holds near and dear to my heart, honestly. And uh, being that I got to bust it out this weekend and play with it, it was very, very fun. So yeah, definitely expect to see me tinkering with this more and more. And with that being said, guys, make sure you leave me a comment, like this video, and we will see you guys next time.